Well, anyways, um, just to get uh, things started for the six people in Canada that, that have been living under a snowbank, uh, just let them know how you got the name. Man, let's see. Wow, that's a it's an old tale. It's an old tale. It goes back to ancient times. <laughs> um, well, it's interesting. The formation of the group initially uh, was between me and 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 a very old friend who was the um, a drummer at the time, and we pulled together a group. Sam started coming in. Josh started coming in, and we didn't have a name. And then the drummer couldn't quite keep up, so Daniel came in. <laughs> And we needed a band name. It had been years and we still hadn't had a band name. I guess it was the old drummer who said he had to go cut wood for Gretna Van Fleet. He was skipping practice. He had to go cut wood for this woman. And um, we thought, well, that's an interesting name, Gretna Van Fleet. What could that mean? It's like, it doesn't quite sound like a name as much as some sort of Dutch, myth, you know, mythological yeah. like <laughs> book or something. And we're like, so we took Gretna and we took the N out and it was Greta Van Fleet and and that just kind of stuck. I mean, I guess I guess it's kind of a part of our heritage and right. I guess the part of the town that we, the small town that we grew up in, uh, Frankenmuth, the a German town. Mm. And I guess Gretna Van Fleet later turns out to, to be a Dutch of Dutch origins, meaning like Pearl of the Sea or Light of the Ocean. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. But again, I think the coolest part is uh, the most interesting part is that we get to sort of take a piece of our home everywhere that we go and everywhere we right. tour. So does uh, the previous drummer, you given him royalties? <laughs> the name or? We can't find him. Absolutely. Oh, okay. We, well, I was we, just we gonna say he's, prob him. he's probably kicking himself these days, but but anyways, you know what I mean? Um, you guys aren't very f uh, far from uh, where I am, actually. No. Uh, I'm a youper. Yeah. yeah. I'm from Sault Ste. Marie. Oh wow! Beautiful, amazing. On the, Cana on beautiful the Canadian, on the Canadian side, though. Yeah, right. That's a beautiful place. That's For the sure. better side. Yeah, <laughs> more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so this this album is a lot deeper than peaceful. Um, did you intend it to be a concept album, or did things just morph that way because of what you see in society or in the last year and a half? A little bit of it was, it was a little bit of that. You know, I I right. don't think. When we when we started forming this album, we had a bunch of ideas, and we knew that there were still some ideas yet to be had. And we we kind of met with Greg, Kirsten, and when we talked about the the basic outline of we wanted to create something very orgasmic and cinematic and 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 big, and you know, kind of start on a clean slate, as you will, sonically. Right. And and once he was on board, uh, and he was very inspired by the ideas and conversation with him, we kind of started recording a couple tracks, and as as those tracks started developing, you know, the lyrics started developing and we kind of realized that this album was a representation of where we currently were, you know, and, and we had a lot to get out and a lot to express musically and lyrically. So it was, it was kind of, um, it wasn't as much of a concept album as it was just a product of us experiencing the world the way we had. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, so much of our travels in the last three years or so have really informed what we sort of wanted to, to create but again right. like Danny said there's some of it was intentional and some of it was you know not so intentional like a byproduct of, way, of society right now right absolutely. absolutely yeah that's a good way of putting it um okay so I was my next question was about Greg I'm thinking normally you, you know I mean interviews like this go about the album and the songs but I'm telling you Greg Kirsten he, what can you say about him? What did he bring out of you guys uh, that you didn't know you had? Because first, and and the other thing is the mixing. I don't know who mixed the album, but I was listening to the album first time on these cheap earbuds riding my stationary bike. And I swear, I couldn't believe the sound. So imagine listening to it on a decent sound system. So whoever mixed it deserves some accolades, but Greg obviously brought brought out some stuff. So what did, what did you notice that was different from the first album? Yeah, I suppose um, working with Greg would be unlike working with any previous producer as well for many ways. And he, I think he, I mean, he definitely illuminated every aspect of our creative consciousness. And it was like, you know, the amount of wisdom and age and experience that he brings to the table sort of elevates the credibility of the entire project in a certain way. I mean, 
we it was problem solving there was like so much if we'd come to the uh, reach maybe a bridge or a selected section of a song and say we've got maybe three options here and we'd bring it to greg we couldn't make our minds up it'd be something like that where he can say well i like all three equally i do this one makes more musical sense because of this but i think we should go with this one because of this so he was sort of he could help us sort of navigate the seas when they got a little stormy and it was like it danny has said in the past as well which is a good way to explain this is our the creative process never slowed down it was very uh it was very continuous because of greg um it, 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 we never really reached too many uh writers blocks or we never came to any bridges we couldn't cross at a pretty immediate pace so that was something that it was really interesting that Greg's, Greg sort of brought to the table that we hadn't really experienced in that such a way before. He brought a lot of confidence out of us too, yeah, absolutely. you know, as musicians. And I think uh, when we first started recording years and years ago, the Black Smoke Rising from the Fires and Anthem of the Peaceful Army, we were still very new to the whole studio scene and we were beaten down pretty hard. Oh yeah. But a lot of that was very deserving. You kind of have to fall flat on your face before you get back up again. And, right. and you know, so it was, and after three years of touring um, and kind of developing chops as musicians, Greg just kind of gave us that confidence that we needed to to be fully productive and creative. Um, and, and we recorded all of this album live and he pushed for that um, and to tape uh, and he pushed for that. And, you know, so there are a lot of different ways that he just really opened us up as musicians. Yeah. And I think it's it's important to say that he gave us more freedom than we've ever had before in the studio. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the first album gave you so much credibility that, uh, you know, he's going to give you the freedom, right? And, and he's experienced with Paul McCartney, Foo Fighters, so he knows, right? When, you know, he, he can sense things, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. Definitely. Yeah, well-deserved credibility, for sure. Yeah. Okay, going on to the next one, it's a little bit longer, but I'm telling you, there's such a wide spectrum of, and for my generation, my demographic, mm. but your parents will get it, but... I'm going to name all the songs and I'm going to tell you what I think of them and who I think they relate to. And let's see if you guys recognize any of the bands or you agree. So oh, cool. the first two amazing. cuts, uh, the, the heat, the heat above, I just found it light up and bouncy. Nice. My way soon. It's like a sixties X Beatles ish kind of thing. Um, actually the intro reminds me, uh, you know, the show friends. I do. Oh, yeah. Okay. The intro guitar riff is kind of a friends kind of thing. So people might get that. Okay. Yeah, Broken, that's interesting. Yeah, Broken that's, Bells. That's interesting. Like, Broken Bells is like kind of a Pink Floyd meets Zeppelin. That's in my opinion. I guess this is one that's very important. Age of Machine has an Hell's Bells ACDC kind of a sound. Have you been told that? No, but that's an interesting so. comparison. I guess you can, I, yeah, I suppose you can get that with this sort of, guitar tonality, the directness of that, the drums that were so yeah. sort of dry and in your face. And then the, the I guess the, the heavy again, the bass, all the elements are kind of right there. So I can oh, see why you say that. Yeah. 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 Uh, Stardust chords, uh, it reminds me of a band Empire of the Sun. Cool. I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I'm familiar with that okay. one. Okay. Well, well, they're a, they're a, Gre they're a Greta Van Fleet copy band. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um this one's very interesting okay uh, do you guys uh, listen to country at all a little bit old okay. country all right like my love has in the guitar tone anyways jake it's got a brad paisley kind of a sound would you agree interesting interesting yeah i'm i guess i'm not su super familiar with the brad paisley uh, yeah. discography but i sh certainly would i'd be interested in listening to it to yeah. just see what that because it's, it's a clean is. tone no one uses well, a clean yeah, tone. No, one, no one uses that it's all really, yeah you're right it's important. I, I really like the reverb too that's used throughout the album oh yeah that was interesting so we recorded at henson studio and they had a reverb chamber it was literally this little building yeah. in the back of the studio where they put you know the the amps up and, and a microphone and we pretty much used that and maybe the plate reverb in the studio walls every once in a while but it was kind of just that tense and room it was interesting segue jake into a question i was going to ask being on the fallon show i wasn't sure if you guys are going to be um present 
literally or is it just going to be you're going to be um um you're going to be playing your set from nashville we're playing our set from nashville later tonight yeah okay so yeah. you're not on the show like with him in present yeah i figured that i wasn't sure how right. that was going to work um, yeah will you be speaking with jimmy or from unfortunately no it's a bit of a double-edged sword okay. yeah you, on the one hand you you don't get to actually be there and, and experience that atmosphere and yeah. meet, you know meet jimmy and right uh but on the other hand you get full control over the set design and you know it's yeah. like you're offered this opportunity so you, you want to make the most of it so we oh, built for sure we built a stage here in nashville and okay. we're gonna have you know we have our own mixing uh front of house guy there to to kind of handle the sound and it's and it's 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 sort of our production at that point and uh yeah we're going there to we're going there tonight we're gonna cameras will be up and we'll be we'll be rolling it live right on i'll be watching it what are you guys doing in your spare time like i mean do you guys watch uh, you guys into netflix or you guys uh skateboard do you get what do you guys do <laughs> i like to golf i'm a oh, big oh, okay cool. sweet massive golfer. he's being massive he's being golfer. he's being humble right now i'm pretty oh, good yeah. i'll take your money <laughs> <laughs> i'll give it to you because i can't golf <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you do? Yeah, we always, Jay, so we always, sort of, we always sort of try to find different things that we do sort of outside of music in a, in a yeah. sense. Um, I mean, I, li I like painting. I, I still play soccer. I have a field near me and I like to do that. Um, sure. Yeah, different sort of surfing. like things. Love to surf. Um, oh. not, not a lot of surfing in Nashville. I was but. just going to say, <laughs> where would you go? <laughs> you just Under have to get a wakeboard, put it behind the lake in Australia, yeah. Los Angeles. Canadian favorite band, past or present. Or Ooh. artist, that's a Steppenwolf, one hundred percent. Nice, really, both yes. Yeah. For me, at least. Yeah, I Neil Young, probably right off the top of my head. Anyway, yeah. What uh, what like I know you guys uh, being in the industry a lot of a lot of times I ask and uh, you know the 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 talent doesn't listen to anybody else. But if you listen to music, who are you listening to right now? It's kind of all over the place. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's okay. we're listening it's to so everywhere. much music so often that we we've fallen into the the void of having to pull out your phone and kind of look at your recents because it's just kind of everywhere. Yeah, okay. I mean, I I I can name a few. Like I've been listening to a lot of Imagine Dragons recently. Okay, I yeah, know them. Yeah, there's a band called Junip that's really great. Actually, I don't know Leo Kotke. Yeah, the Fruit Bats. Yeah, Fruit Bats are great. I've actually listened to some Killers recently. Oh, all the Killers is, um, from Vegas. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I kind of I, I, orig I originally thought they were from uh, England. Mm. When I first heard them, the singer he just has that kind of English kind of a sound. Yeah, you're right. There's some sort of inflection there that kind of sounds English, right? They borrow from us, we borrow from them. Yeah, yeah exactly. The um, how are you guys handling the success? Like, you guys are going to be off the charts. Like, I remember um, your last album debuted on the Billboard at like three. I think this one's going to be close to Uno. I mean, this is going to be just blowing them out of water. So, how are you handling success at such a young age? And I mean, and, and much more to come. How do you keep grounded? Success to us is the ability to tour and travel the world and fulfill our personal, you know, desires to right. experience the world and play rock and roll across the nation and touch people and let them touch us. And to us, you know, that is, it's overwhelming. It's incredible. It's the most humbling experience you could ever imagine. I never would have thought years ago that the four of us would be able to accomplish all the things that we have in the last few years. And, and this last year in the pandemic has really been the year to allow all of us to sort of think about that, to actually right. have a chance to stop because it's just been chaos for the last three years. Yeah, I think, it, I guess if that's sort of, we, you know, you measure what the definition of success really is. And again, like Danny said, for us, it's, it's not monetarily and it's not maybe, you know, it's not it's, it's not fame it's not status it's not fame it's success to us is being able to play for the people people and and play rock and roll Perfect. for our generation and artistic freedom yeah and i think you know three years ago prior to you know the first not you know the first hint of us in in any public eye i don't think yeah. that 
four younger guys playing rock and roll and blues music in their garage would ever think that we'd be here right now. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up because I know you guys have a whack of stuff to do, but I'm just going to ask you a couple uh, questions, so just make them really short and tight. Uh, Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys. A friend of mine, what's the most annoying question you get asked constantly? And second, um, what would you like to say to your Canadian fans uh, in, uh, in, in leaving? I'd say the uh, the most annoying question is, uh, how do you guys feel about getting compared to Led Zeppelin? <laughs> That's an obvious answer. Have you yeah, guys ever I, heard I that? that? Yeah. <laughs> or or you think you think that's an odd one? Maybe we should give it a more creative. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good. <laughs> it's just one. the truth, man. <laughs> it's just the truth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think I think one thing that we'd like to say to the Canadian fans, especially, we're, so we're from Michigan, so we're yeah. we're basically Canadian. we're neighbors. Yeah, we're yep. basically Canadian, and we've been there. We Danny and I were discussing this actually before this interview. We've been to Canada throughout maybe twice, mm. and so we're really looking forward more than anything to getting into Canada more as we as we move on and we progress forward and we hope to see you know we see everybody's faces there we certainly haven't had enough of Canada yet no you guys have been been uh, just great to talk to and uh I can't say I wish you success because you're gonna you're gonna you have it and this album's just gonna kick ass I'm telling you right now it's a deep dark <laughs> album in in a, in a few ways but I mean it's gonna reach all the demographics from rock prog rock hard rock to even uh that little bit of country that I was talking about so thanks again guys yeah thank you thank you